Hi guys, welcome back to part two of my computer build video. Um, just wanted to start out by reminding you that I'm not an expert. I would refer you to people like Dave Dugdale, Will Labina, and Linus Tech Tips. Dave Dugdale did a really great computer build which takes you step by step why he chose a component, how he put it together, and how it worked at the end. He also has a fantastic video on his setup. Will Abina has some amazing videos, he's a really skillful guy, um, really interesting to watch him work. He's got an amazing workshop. Um, but his computer build video is again brilliant for amateurs because it takes you through step by step and gives you the confidence to do what you need to do. Um, and then finally, Linus Tech Tips. Linus Tech Tips have got videos on their YouTube site for anything you could possibly want to use. Um, I use them for my disk setup um, and just for referring back for components and just you know general information that I needed. There's nothing on there that I couldn't find. Between those three people, you don't need anything else. Um, they will give you everything you need to know. I'm gonna crack on now and get on with the build. And fingers crossed, everything works okay. Okay, thanks. I started the build by locating and identifying all of the screws, standoffs and ties which came with the case. Your case should come with pretty much everything you need to fit all of your components to it. I wanted to make sure nothing went missing whilst completing the build so I kept everything in a bowl on the table. The first parts I fitted were the standoffs for the motherboard. The case has lots of different holes for different styles and sizes of motherboard. It's important that you find the right holes, otherwise you could scratch the back of the motherboard when you try and fit it onto a poorly placed standoff. Before fitting the motherboard to the case, I wanted to fit the CPU. The CPU has a triangle in one corner which should correspond to a triangle on the motherboard. I struggled to find it at first. It took me a while to realise that the marking wasn't actually on the motherboard. It was on the plastic cover which covered the socket. It didn't really matter though, as the CPU has two notches on the side which prevents you from putting it in the wrong place. Fitting the CPU was the most nerve wracking moment for me. Next, I closed the clamp and fastened it down with the spring loaded arm. Don't be surprised at how much effort it takes to put this arm back into place. Before fitting the motherboard into the case, don't forget to fit the IO shield. If you forget this and then fit the motherboard, you won't be able to get it in afterwards. If your standoffs are in the correct position, everything should now slot into place nice and easily. Be very careful not to scratch the back of the motherboard with the standoffs and then screw it into place. Now it was time to fit the RAM. This is really simple, as with the chip, the RAM has notches in it which prevents you from putting it in the wrong place. You just need to check with your motherboard manual to make sure you're putting it in the correct slots. You should find that the slots are colour coded and it should be very very clear which ones to use first. You simply push the RAM modules into place until you hear a nice satisfying click. Next I fitted the back plate for the cooling system. It simply fitted onto the back of the motherboard and then was screwed into place by four standoffs on the other side of the board. I then fitted the fans to the radiator in a push-pull configuration and cleaned the back of the CPU as I touched it accidentally whilst making my way around the case. I then added a small pea-sized amount of thermal compound to the back of the CPU. Mm. 
and screwed the radiator heat sink into place, making sure that I had a nice even pressure across all four corners to get the most out of the cooling action of the heat sink. Once the radiator was fitted, I stood the case up and started work on the storage. This was really simple, as the trays simply slid out and had all the holes already in place to screw the SSD into place. Both hard drives were fitted in exactly the same way. They simply screwed into the rubber grommets which kept them nice and safe from vibration and the trays slid back into the case. As the computer is going to be sat on a hard floor, I mounted the power supply, drawing air from underneath the case. I passed the major cables through the large grommet at the back of the case. and used the four screws to secure the power supply at the back of the case. Before fitting any of the bulkier items such as the GPU, I ran all the cables and fitted as many as I could. This made it really easy once the GPU was fitted and I knew that everything fitted in the right place and there was going to be no problems running cables. At this point I also fitted the Blu-ray drive which I rescued from my old computer. It easily slid into the slot at the front of the case and was secured by two screws. Now it's time to fit the GPU. I removed the correct blanking plates and slid the GPU into the slots on the motherboard. I then secured the GPU in place, ran the rest of the cabling to the motherboard and the GPU, tidied everything up and replaced the back cover to the case. The system was now ready for a monitor, keyboard and mouse so we could attempt its first boot. Okay, um, so that took me about five hours. Um, I'm sorry, but I was concentrating so much that I forgot about the filming towards the end. Um, I think basically what I mix, missed off the filming towards the end is just tying up the cables at the back, that kind of thing, which is exceedingly boring to do, let alone watch. So I won't worry about that too much. Um, this. I've got everything set up, ready to go. Mice plugged in, mouse, keyboard. Um, I've turned on the power at the back and I've got a power light so what I'm going to do, fingers crossed, is turn the power on um, and try and get into the BIOS settings so let's see what happens. Got fans, gigabyte and we're in the BIOS settings. So, um, my mouse should work here. Yep. Exciting, isn't it, Willis? Mouse is working. I've got all the options so I can set my boot drives, everything. I'm good to go. So, let's get this set up and then I'll show you how it performs when it's actually working. <laughs> 